Yeah, so yes, it's me. I, so as David alluded to, I'm one of his PhD students. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, interpolating between meshes. Um, it's what's called towards, but actually everything I'm going to talk to you now is in Master Firedrake. It's in the documentation. You can read all about it if this talk is not clear. Um, <laughs> not beyond yet. <laughs> What's not? You can't replace towards with beyond the end. Yeah, no, no. Uh, we're there, we're there, we've got it. I need to write up the PhD. Um, so why would you want to do this? Um, why do you want to do mesh-to-mesh -mesh interpolation? You, um, if you're considering the same domain, you might be doing, say, mesh refinement experiments, um, and you want to get the solution from one mesh onto another mesh and compare them. You might be trying different cell shapes, or um, maybe uh, you are doing something like mesh adaptivity, and again, you can move solutions around. Uh, you might be doing like non-matching multigrids, so prolongation is interpolation, restriction is, um, it's, um, is the adjoint to interpolation, which I'll define in a minute. And like and many other things you might have in, like things that I've talked about before to do with um, point data evaluation. Um, but what about things like different domains? So you could use cross mesh interpolation to say interpolate onto a subdomain of the mesh. So here this is a unit square mesh, and I've got a function on it which is x times y. So that's what this is visualizing, and this is an immersed line. Um, so it's um, an immersed manifold, which is just a line in the unit square. And if I can interpolate onto that, I should be able to work out the line integral on, on it. Um, also, you may be going the other way. You've got a simulation, which is on, say, the, the line, and you want to couple it to a 2D simulation or higher dimensional. So that could be a, the model of a river in 1D associated with a 2D uh, model of a flood so let's get everyone on the same page. What happens if I call interpolate of some expression? So this is the operator we use. It takes you from one function space to another space. Um, and it does this by evaluating the dual um, basis functionals um, on your whatever your expression is in your source function space. And we're not going to dive into what this really means. But the point is um, you need to be able to evaluate this to get the coefficients or your basis um, in kind of the global space. Um, so that's the key. Um, the advantage of interpolation as opposed to other ways of getting solutions from one mesh to another are that you can do it cell by cell and you don't have to do a solve. I.e. So if you're doing Galerkin projection, you need to solve a system, which is expensive. Uh, so here's uh, what I'm going to set out to do. So we'll start on this source mesh. It's an immersed manifold of a sphere. Um, it's got, um, the cells are quadrilaterals, so I want to go take some function on this and I want to take it over here to this immersed manifold which is um, got triangle cells, um, so we've got different cells, um, cell shapes, um, they're both immersed, different numbers of cells and crucially if I'm running in parallel they're going to have different parallel, dom parallel domain decompositions. Uh, this is the thing that has always proved tricky in ever getting this implemented in the past. So how do we do that? Um, so starting off, we've got a function. It's I, so I'm just doing, um, this is the expression, it's the sum of the coordinates. That's what the function looks like. So I'm gonna give you, um, this is uh, CG2, so the Lagrange polynomials I'm gonna uh, talk about here. Um, this is a nice place to start with because it allow, we can plot what I might call the node coordinates. What do I mean by that? Well, remember I was saying that we use this, um, this dual basis functional to, um, evaluated on the expression um, to get the coefficients. Um, now in general in Firedrake, all dual basis functionals are defined as a sum of weights of point evaluations. That does, and that's true always, no matter if we're doing, um, you've got derivative nodes or, or integral moments. Um, the advantage of using Lagrange polynomials is that the weight is one and you don't and the sum, there is no sum. So this is the definition of your dual basis function. It's the, um, it's the evaluation of the function. And so hence I can talk about these x, j, r, these node locations here. And you can generate this, um, you can get these points in with about three lines of code, um, which I've included here, but it's uh, 
Uh, well, I probably should have, never mind. But, um, and the crucial thing is that these points that you get have the domain decomposition, so the parallel domain decomposition of your destination mesh. So, in principle, all you need to do to get your source function onto here is to evaluate these points in this function, in, in, at the points in this function, move them back, and you've got all of the, um, the coefficients that you need to build your function. Now, that's actually quite tricky, it turns out. Um, firstly, in this example, you'll notice that the points aren't actually on this immersed manifold. Now, thankfully, that's been solved um, by a master's student who um, was working with David. And so what you get when you do a point evaluation is you get the sort of the, pro the projection of the nearest point um, of the nearest point on the mesh um, for the function onto the point that you've specified, as long as it's within some tolerance that you can specify, which is a relative tolerance to the size of the cells. Um, now, the key then is, so how are we going to take these points that we've got here onto here? What we need to do that is we need to use vertex-only mesh. So this is the recommended way to do point evaluations in FireDrake. The idea is, is that you end up with one function which represents these points. Um, it's a function which is designed, which is defined on a mesh at the points. So this is the mesh and it's immersed inside uh, another mesh. So in this case, it's immersed inside the source, uh, the kind of source mesh we're taking things from. So this is the code, this is how you make it. So I, I have a vertex-only mesh. It's immersed in the source mesh. It takes these destination node coordinates, which I've got from my other, um, uh, my other mesh. You make a P0DG, um, helpfully defined by India just now, um, and then you, when you make a function on that um, and interpolate, the, the, interpolate this onto that function space, and it gives you a function which is all of the points. So, I said the next bit is tricky. When you get to, when you're thinking about your parallel domain decomposition, you have a problem because the list of destination node coordinates have a different parallel domain decomposition to the, um, one, the same locations on the, um, here the vertex only mesh or indeed on the source mesh. When you make a vertex only mesh, it takes the list of coordinates that you give it, defined on whatever ranks they are, and it moves them around so that they are in the locations um, on the mesh which have that bit of the domain. Um, so what I've done is, so I've given it this, which are, you know, they're here, and it's redistributed them to be here. So in both cases here, I'm looking at rank naught on the source of the destination mesh. So what do I do? How do I solve this? Well, in Petsy, there's a really nice tool called Star Forests, um, which is built to solve this problem. How do you move data between different parallel domain decompositions? What you have to, to store then is what rank is this point on and where is it in this kind of list? Now, to save that, um, to make it a kind of nice fire drakey way of doing it, I, was, we, um, well, I came up with the idea of it being another vertex only mesh, which you can access by asking this vertex only mesh for it, what it, I'm going to call its input ordering. So, and that is a vertex only mesh where it has um, all of the points that you gave it in exactly um, the ordering and on the ranks where they were specified. <clears throat> So the advantage then of that is that I can make a function on this vertex only mesh and I can, inter I can move the data here using um, a star forest reduce operation um, and get the data here. Um, if I want to go the other way, I'd use a broadcast. And so, and it looks like this. So here's my vertex only mesh input ordering. This is new and important. Um, you make um, the function spec, you make the P0 DG function space on that vertex only mesh because that's the only function space you're allowed to make on a vertex only mesh. And then to get the data um, onto it, um, you do your um, SF reduce, which is um, inside this interpolation operation. Um, so that is, that is this function, and this is this function.
the points. All right? So that's the tricky bit done. Now all I can need to do, because I've got, these are the coefficients um, of the, um, uh, the, the, the kind of the global coefficients of the um, function space. So I can just take that and in a parallel safe way, I can just set the that to um, the, these values and then ta -da, I've got my destination function. And all of that is wrapped inside an interpolate core. Um, so if you, you can run this example yourself, um, you can take this function from here and get this as an, as an answer. And you can do everything that you can normally do with um, interpol interpolation. You can make interpolators and you can um, make an, do the adjoint or transpose interpolator, which means that this whole thing works with the adjoint. You can use this with pi adjoint and you can make, um, you can have automa automated um, uh, adjoint equations generated for you. Uh, I don't know what you guys are going to want to do with that, but I'm, it's going to be fun finding out. <laughs> um, <Everything. laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and the source and the destination domains do not have to be the same because we're using um, vertex only mesh as this intermediary. So all I need to do is you know, get the, the points on here. I just need to evaluate them on my function. And so I end up, so in this example, right, I have my, um, I've got a function space on this line. Uh, this is my function f. I interpolate into it, get f line, and then I do this assemble, and I get root two over three as the answer, um, which is, uh, I sat down, had to remember how to do line integrals. <laughs> Seemingly the, right, the correct answer for line integral on that. Um, and if you want to do the opposite, so you can, so you want to go from, um, I mean, this works in general, right? You could just have two, um, spheres or whatever, which are just partially overlapping in the domain, or you could have a, a, a line which um, you want to kind of see how it affects the, uh, a, a bigger domain. Um, you, there's a keyword argument that you uh, switch on to allow that. So it will only, if, it will only change the, um, the coefficients for the um, DOFs or basis functions that it can. Um, so that's a kind of a limit. That, that it's a limitation for you to work your way around. This is all detailed in, documented in detail in the manual. So have a look to see what you can and cannot do. Um, so this uh, the, this is a kind of a sum, summary of what you can and can't do here. So for your source mesh and function spaces, so you can do most function spaces apart from ones that you can't put vertex only meshes in. So that's like not enriched because we can't really do. Can't do dual evaluation on those yet. Sorry for people who want RTC and that sort of thing. Uh, no, because we didn't we didn't do dual evaluation. We need the cube in order to be able to do the, the point of evaluation. Oh, I see. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, and you can go for most meshes, but not high order meshes yet. Um, in terms of the destination, though, we are limiting us at the moment. Uh, it's just ones which have these point evaluation nodes. I haven't and don't plan to implement the um, the summation you need to fully express uh, in general um, a uh, dual basis functional. Um, but we can all the messages that I've tested you can interpolate onto. So the, here's our takeaways. So you can do this. Um, please try it out um, and you can report bugs but I won't be fixing them because I need to write up my thesis. Um, <laughs> um, you can do the, you can now do line plane and volume integrals. The thing that I think is probably missing from being able to do this is the ability to just quickly arbitrarily come up with um, uh, uh, the meshes that you need. Um, it's not super hard, like I've, I've made some in the tests but they, there isn't a, like a nice API for doing that yet. Um, we, you can do, um, so you can have a go doing model coupling, this is all annotated. Um, the thing that I actually didn't mention, but I want to make sure that I highlighted is that there is now a parallel safe way to do uh, point data input, uh, which is um, in the manual, look in the point evaluation section. Um, if there's time, I can explain it to anyone who wants to know. Um, 
And yeah, so he and here are the, this is where you need to go. Um, and here's where the figures are. So yeah, thank you very much. For model coupling, uh, does this mean you can do a sort of thing where say you have two different meshes, potentially a different dimension, you maybe have a function space on one mesh and on the other mesh, and you can kind of take a Cartesian product of those function spaces and couple them somehow and actually use that as say your bilinear form. Um, and maybe they're coupled by interpolating. Uh, I mean, as long as you can get an expression, you, I mean, you need to decide which domain it is you're doing, you're, sol you're, you're solving the problem. Oh, right? no, no, you're on both. So uh, the answer is really, really, really nearly. Um, what you need is um, that, um, so the, here you saw the interpolation function call. Mm -hmm. What you need is interpolation to be an operator that you can put inside the form so that yeah. when you run a mix system, you can run That's interpolation in the right point. Yeah. Right. So that operator was merged into UFL yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and nice. the fire code is like uh, next week, maybe? It's like really, 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, I can't tell where are the people pointing at me. Okay. Um. So you were talking about um. The, I'm not sure this not sure this is exactly related, but considering, for example, your line integral, is there a kind of easy way of interpolating between meshes in different dimensions? So suppose you have a line that is just a line, and then you have a line that is embedded in two dimensions. But that is the same object in FireDrake? No, you need to, because you, you, you need that geometric inf um, information, right? So if you've just got a line, which is both topologically and geometrically a line, there is no way to specify, you, you, can't, you don't know anything about that in a higher dimension, you need yeah. it to be an immersed. Yeah, but like if you have an immersed and unimmersed line, can you... Um, interpolate between them, or at least just map function. No, so you, you need to have the same geometric dimension. No, that's, that's, so you can't do it using interpolate. Yeah. You don't need to do it using interpolate. Yeah, can you, can you have because, oh, I see. because they're going to be the same by construction, so you, um, the, you can just copy the dots. Oh yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, you can copy the dots. Um, that's so it's fine. safe and then I'm going to be in a different order depending what end so, of your line is which, or something. Um, how, do you, how do you guarantee the... The domain the, the right. going to be the same. So, the, you, yeah, you have to get them from the same edge. So, what you do, so the way you do it is, and this is actually how, okay, so let me explain to you how you get a periodic interval mesh. I think this will explain what goes on here. Right? When you call periodic interval mesh in Firebreak, Fire, what Firebreak actually does is meshes a circle in, uh, embedded in 2D. Hmm. It then um, produces a DG um, vector field with dimension one and does the change of coordinates so that that DG field is, um, is the line coordinates, the unwrapped coordinates. And then it gives you back a mesh where that's the coordinate field. I convinced Dave that's how we have to read a pub in day three. <laughs> and that is, so the topology is still uh, a periodic end. And the thing is that when you do that, the topology, which is actually the thing that's parallelized, is maintained. Mm. So analogously, if you, so a line is kind of a bit trivial because the chances of you having parallelized a line are kind of odd. I mean, uh, it, it does, it does. But if you, um, but okay, you knew about a line. So assume, so it, you can I'm do this. Like two to three dimensions. Exactly. So what do you do? You make you, you make a plane, yes. and your um, plane is uh, it, your plane mesh is parallelized because you created it in a parallel script, so it's parallelized. Mm -hmm. And then you create another mesh in the same way. So you make a coordinate field, you make a, a vector value field on that mesh with the different geometric dimension. You put the change of coordinates through it, and you make the new mesh from that. And because you made the new mesh from the previous mesh. It, the, the topologies and the parallel distribution of the topologies guarantee to be identical, and then you can just copy degrees of freedom across. So you create, so you create things immersed and then unimmersed. Or well, the other way around. You can change coordinates whichever way you like, around you like. Okay, yeah. Tom, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was wondering about um, like 
lots of the regridding softwares that I've seen before have conservative interpolation or different types of interpolation and I was trying to work out whether you have all, all of those things already by consideration of which function space you're interpolating it to. I don't know if you thought about that. Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I think but I think you're right. I think it's all about which function space, is it not? This doesn't conserve, this is consistent. Oh yeah. If you want if you want conservative, oh, yeah, yeah. you need to do some approximation to intercourse. Hysterish. Cool. So we do we, we don't have that as an operation. No, we well, we have to what we have is for certain limited cases, we can do the Golokian projection between two meshes that really match, yeah. and that one is that one, that one is conservative but not bounded. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you can get you can get unexpected. Um, you can get new maximum. Yeah, it's new maximum yes. minimum. Yeah. Yeah. People who care about not going negative can become sad. Yeah. Um, um, how about that? You can you can you can interpolate into them. You just can't. I can't yet interpolate from them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's it's. Well, the, 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 the biggest so issue. The biggest issue is when you need to graduate. I need to graduate. <laughs> one. And the other thing is, so the, the this is all built around using <coughs> vertex only meshes, and the and there is insight. So to do all of that redistribution, we have this um, we have a voting oh, algorithm. Right. Um, and when you're in high order, it all becomes much more complicated um, in a way that David understands. Uh, so you, and you have to do some kind of projection to burn stuff on so the bounding blocks. The bounding blocks, so the problem that actually is, is, is much more straightforward than this. Um, the bounding blocks algorithm is not currently safe for high order elements. That's the problem. And in order to make it safe, you need to um, change coordinates into Bernstein polynomials before you. Uh, we're running out of time here, but I'm, I'm happy to, in the part later, explain what, what, what the exact limitation is, and I look forward to your call. Thank you. Um, <laughs> excellent. Thank you very much. Um,